In this lecture, we're going to discuss the principle known as mutual inductance. So, let's begin by looking at the following diagram. Let's suppose we take a cylindrical solenoid as shown in the following diagram and we take two different coils of wire and we loop it around our solenoid. So, let's call this coil number one that has some number of loops and coil number two which also has a certain quantity of loops. Now, let's allow an alternating electric current to flow through the wire of coil number one. So, as our electric current that is changing with time flows through the loops of coil number one, that alternating electric current will create a changing magnetic field within the following solenoid. And that changing magnetic field will essentially travel in the following direction. And that changing magnetic field will eventually reach the loops of coil number two. Now, because our magnetic field is changing, it will create a changing magnetic flux. And by Faraday's law, whenever we have a change in magnetic flux, that will induce an EMF. So an EMF given by E2 will be induced inside the wire of coil number 2. And as a result of that induced EMF, an induced electric current will exist within the wire of coil number 2. Now, whenever EMF is induced in a coil as a result of an alternating or changing electric current in a coupled coil in coil number one, that is known as mutual inductance. So, once again, coils number one and coils number two are wrapped around a conductor, let's suppose in this case a solenoid. Now, an alternating electric current flows through the wires of coil number one, which produces a changing magnetic field inside the solenoid as shown in this diagram. Now, the changing magnetic field makes its way through the loops of coil number two. By Faraday's law, this change in magnetic flux within the loops of coil number two will induce an EMF in coil number two, which in turn will create an electric current. Now, whenever an EMF is induced in a coil as a result of a changing current in a coupled second coil, this is known as mutual inductance. So, let's try to quantify, let's try to determine a mathematical relationship between our induced EMF and our electric current that produces it. So let's define the following three variables, the following three values. So phi two one is the magnetic flux through coil number one produced by coil number, or through coil number two produced by coil number one. And two is the number of loops of wire inside coil number two, while I1 is the alternating electric current inside coil number one that produces this magnetic flux. Now, from experimental results, we know that the product of N2 and Phi21, so the number of loops in coil 2 multiplied by the magnetic flux in coil 2 due to coil 1, is directly proportional to the electric current that flows in coil number 1. So if we increase our quantity of I1, we increase the quantity of Phi21. So we know that if we place a proportionality constant, we can replace this with an equal sign. And that proportionality constant given by capital M is known as the mutual inductance. This is our proportionality constant. So if we rearrange this equation and solve for the magnetic flux through coil 2 due to coil 1, we get the following result. So, the magnetic flux that exists within coil 2 as a result of coil 1 is equal to mutual inductance M multiplied by electric current in coil 1 I1 divided by N2, the number of loops of wire in coil 2. 
Now, therefore, by Faraday's law, we see that the induced EMF in coil 2 given by this symbol is equal to, well, by Faraday's law, that is equal to the negative of the product of the number of loops in coil 2 multiplied by the rate of change of our magnetic flux in loop 2 or in coil 2 as a result of coil 1. So D phi 2 1 D T. Now we can replace our phi to 1 with the following ratio and we get the following result. Notice we have N2 appearing on the top and bottom so we can cancel that out and we get the following result. So, we see that our induced EMF in coil 2 is equal to the negative of the product of the mutual inductance, which is a constant, multiplied by the rate of change of our electric current found inside coil number 1. So notice, although mutual inductance is a constant and is independent of I1, it does depend on things like the shape, size, and position of the coil of our of these two coils within our solenoid. Now, one important application of this principle of mutual inductance exists in something that we already spoke about, and that is transformers. So transformers are examples of devices that use the principle known as mutual inductance to essentially increase or decrease the EMF by varying the number of loops found inside our coils of wire.